These mice are genetically identical. So why are they so different from each other? Can what we do and what happens to us really affect the way our genes function? The 20th century has been called the century of the gene. Technological innovations were giving access to life at the subcellular level, a micro world never seen before, a factory of cells, molecules and proteins. And by the second half of the 20th century, this research had given rise to a new model of gene function, sometimes called the central dogma. Had a concept of we can explain everything through our genes and we can almost justify things through our genes. It's not really my fault, it's in my genes. The idea that we are our genes, that we have inherited traits that effectively define us from our parents, is no longer considered to be the case. Identical twins have always been of interest to geneticists. And traditionally, identical twins have been used to show the power of genes. As students, you were given examples of identical twins separated at birth and brought up in very different environments. But lo and behold, when they were tracked down and reunited, they had the same hairstyles, they were doing the same jobs, married to spouses with the same name. And there you have it, living proof that genes will out. Nurture? Forget it. DNA's your destiny. But there's another side to identical twins that tells a rather different story. Epigenetics is concerned with how genes can be switched on and switched off. That is, they can be expressed or silenced. And how this information may also be passed on to the next generation. These epigenetic instructions come from little chemical groups called epigenetic marks or tags that get added to the DNA and the proteins surrounding it. And this is how cells read genes. So, look at it this way. While the genome is like the hardware of your computer, the epigenome is more like the software, giving the instructions. Back in the 1980s, research had shown that the children of mothers who ate an unhealthy diet in pregnancy were at a significantly higher risk of cardiovascular disease diabetes and obesity. Trouble was, scientists had no way of explaining it. That is, until epigenetics, and a groundbreaking experiment with some now very famous mice. The year was 2003. The location, Duke University Medical Center, Durham, North Carolina. The researchers were Randy Jertle and his assistant, Rob Waterland. And the leading characters, some golden agouti mice, so-called because they carry a gene called the agouti that makes them yellow, ravenous, obese, and prone to cancer and diabetes. So, Jertle and Waterland wondered what would happen if they tried to alter this unfortunate genetic legacy epigenetically. 